I created the same rendering with every software I could get my hands on. And as you know, people have strong opinions about which software is the best. To level the playing field, I am allowing myself 30 minutes to create each scene. So let's begin. Enscape is a fast, easy visualization plugin that integrates into your favorite design tools. Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, AutoCAD, and Vectorworks. Enscape is one of the easiest softwares to work in, and the drag and drop user interface provides a fast and reliable workflow. This is great, except when the assets you place fail to show up in the 3D modeling software. The material selection was average based on the realism quality and small library, but easy to use and edit. Additional materials could be created through the 3D software and would improve the overall quality. It didn't take me very long to understand the program and become proficient using it. I can see why Enscape is commonly used by many practicing firms. The goal is to keep the material and style and composition similar between the softwares for the most transparent comparison. I was able to get almost everything I wanted set up, so if I had more time I would fine tune the details and populate assets around the scene with better intentionality and care. V-Ray is under the same umbrella of Chaos Group. If you know what you are doing, V-Ray creates some incredible realistic renders. If not, you may be in for a rough ride. V-Ray has a little bit of a learning curve, but hey, at least you get a 30 day free trial to test it out. At that point, you either have mastered it or you wanna pull your hair out waiting for one render to take six hours. I used the Chaos Cosmos browser to find the ideal concrete texture I was looking for. In Rhino, I organized everything in the model into an individual layer for each material. This made it easier to add the V-Ray materials. Using the selection of 3D model assets and vegetation, I populated the scene, placing each element individually to a vertex in Rhino. The placement of objects could be a little bit more intuitive, but because V-Ray integrates well with 3D modeling software, the movement was very precise. What separates V-Ray is usually the final output quality. That requires a lot of time spent adjusting settings for materials and lighting. Since I did not have much time, I went to HDRI Haven to download an HDRI sky to improve the appearance of the sky lighting. I continued to mess with the sun and cloud settings because I knew the lighting would make or break this render. In addition to using an HDRI sky, I tested out the new V-Ray light gen tool. You can generate multiple variations of lighting environments for interior and exterior renders. I used one of the variations for my final rendering. Besides the fact I nearly crashed my Rhino file, I was extremely happy with how it turned out. As long as you ignore some of the people hovering in the landscape in the background. With more time, I would be able to get the lighting to look a lot more realistic and hopefully fix the small details in the composition. Some of the pros of V-Ray are the potential quality and the ease of workflow between softwares. But to get that quality, it requires effort and can be confusing for beginners. On a side note, V-Ray is cheaper than Enscape, which really shocked me when I found that out. You might have produced a Rhino render before, and trust me, that's a scary feeling. It's okay because this usually happens when you first try V-Ray and haven't switched to the default Rhino rendering settings to use V-Ray. Rhino may be easy to use, but basically lacks in every other aspect. The lighting is atrocious, very subpar material collection, and no assets. Not to mention, it takes way longer than it should to render. If you want to put in the bare minimum effort, then I suggest you are just better off taking a screenshot of the model rather than trying to master Rhino Render. I know the purpose of Rhino was never to be an elite renderer, but still thought it would be a cool thing to compare with all the other softwares. The pros, none, the cons, everything. If you're looking for a rendering tool with minimal effort, might I present to you Veris AI. It does directly plug in with SketchUp and Revit. And if you use a different 3D modeling software, you can still take a screenshot of your model and upload it. You'll get results incredibly fast. You can edit and fine tune elements in the image that you don't like using the refine tool. Select the boundaries you wanna edit then type in a new text prompt indicating the changes. The results are good given how little time you have to wait. For the time that you spend, Veris is very good with the quality that it produces. And plus, it's a little bit of fun to mess around with these AI tools. One thing I didn't like about Veris is that it can't create trees or people unless they're already in the 3D model. Lumion is a standalone program that you import your 3D models into. In recent years, they have added a live sync feature, allowing you to simultaneously connect to your 3D model. With this, you can set views and make edits to the 3D model, which will update live in Lumion. This creates a smoother and quicker workflow between software. Lumion has a good library of assets, which I was able to place quickly and easily, therefore allowing me to put more time into customizing the style of the render. Lumion comes with some preset render styles if you don't have much time. What takes some time is not only adding the right styles, but finding the ones that fit best together. These effects are almost like you're taking the image into Photoshop. In addition, this is where you can also add ray tracing to further enhance the quality of your render. In Lumion, it is important to utilize their great library of skies and photo effects settings to maximize your final output. With more time, I would create some PBR materials, more accurately place trees, people, 
and objects throughout the scene. I liked the quality of the vegetation that Lumion has in its library, and it was really easy to use and pick up for beginners. I wasn't really happy with how the texture popped within my rendering, and that's probably because I didn't have a lot of time to adjust lighting and texture mapping, but I spent a lot more time setting up the rendering than I would have liked to do. In addition, don't expect to download Lumion onto your laptop. It has extremely large file size and can be very slow unless you're using a PC. I know some of you can't live without using Photoshop post-production for your final renders. That is why I spent some time transforming this base model screenshot into a final rendering, only using Photoshop, of course, and some materials that I downloaded from SketchUp Textures. SketchUp Textures has a huge selection of materials for free, with higher quality materials and texture maps included with the paid version. I tiled all the textures I wanted to use, cut them out, and then used the multiply effect to place them all over the building while keeping the shadows and edges. Then I brought in multiple images of forest vegetation and scenic backdrops to bring a lively feel to the composition. I used Photoshop's AI tool to cover up and fix small mistakes. I wanted the backdrop to integrate smoothly, so I used the generative fill tool to fix that. Photoshop AI steps up the game by allowing you to add people, assets, vegetation with a couple of clicks. With a little more time, I would like to improve the lighting, the color correction, texture maps, and import entourage and vegetation photos to add more layers of complexity to the composition. Photoshop gives you a lot of flexibility and freedom in what you can create, but sometimes it's hard to get the scale and the perspective right with everything that you import into Photoshop. E5 Rendering has recently introduced some new AI features within their tools. Using the D5 High tool, you can create images from text using references and other settings like this. D5 has a pretty substantial asset library as well. D5 has a free community version, a student version, and then a pro paid version. But unless you have a pro or student account, you won't have access to all of the assets. If they don't have a material you want, you can import your own and use the AI material texture tool to create depth maps for your materials. Next, I began adding people to the scene, bring scale and interest to the composition. I used the vegetation scatter tool to place multiple trees at once across the landscape, then used it to paint grass, giving it more depth and a three-dimensional feel, replacing the 2D grass textured surface. D5's basic rendering outputs are already pretty good, but if you are low on time, you can use preset custom scenes. By using these scenes, you will steal the lighting and scene settings, saving you hours of adjusting each slider perfectly. If you don't like any of the skies in D5, which would be crazy because they offer so many options, but you can find an image on the internet of the most beautiful sky imaginable. Bring it into D5 using the AI Atmosphere Match Tool. D5 will take the properties, lighting, and colors from the sky image and transform your render using that image. I gave this a couple of tries and really liked outputs that it created. D5 was the only program where I was able to add interior lighting because using their AI tools saved me a lot of time. One of the benefits of using D5 were those AI tools because of how practical they were as well as the vegetation scatter tool, which made it super easy to place multiple items of vegetation all at once. One of the cons is the free version is limited for what you can use, but you can easily fix that by upgrading to the pro version, which you can find a link to buy that in the description. From the outside, many people just assume architects play Minecraft every day. Although architects don't use Minecraft at all for their designs, this is what it would look like if they did. In Minecraft, you can only build using cubes. Therefore, the scale and form of this building differentiates from the others. I was limited with the materials and how each block could be placed. Thank goodness this building had no curves, Otherwise, it would have been nearly impossible. Building the shell took up all the allocated time, so I didn't get into designing the interior of the space. If I had more time, I would explore into modding to create more realistic materials and also photorealistic lighting. I've seen some tutorials about this on YouTube. Using Minecraft was a really fun option, but it's definitely not practical, and there's a lot of limitations on material and scale. Fabry has an AI whiteboard tool that allows you to upload a 3D model screenshot and will turn it into a rendering. This tool creates renderings quickly and easily with virtually no effort. You add a text prompt and style suggestions and AI will take care of the rest. Fabry Imagine allows users to refine images, edit or erase elements that they want to fix. In this case, I wanted a more realistic tree and landscape. In addition, Fabry's AI whiteboard tool is the place to go when you're in the design process. The collaborative platform uses ChatGPT and Stable Diffusion technology to maximize your potential. This platform was created for designers and gives you really good quality for the time it takes to produce the images. But the AI doesn't always listen to your quests or whatever you type in the text prompt. So just do your best. Blender. Recently, I've seen a lot of people creating some incredible architecture renderings in Blender, making me 
want to try it out. I'll let you in on a little secret. Blender is not easy to learn. It felt like I spent hours just trying to figure out how to move properly. I had to watch a new tutorial for every single thing I did. That set the tone for some late nights. But enough was enough. I started the timer and attempted to create the world's most below average architecture rendering. Here it is. The upside to using Blender for architecture visualization is high because it provides a ton of freedom, creativity, and potential with additional plugins you can use. If you don't have 40 hours a week to set aside to learn Blender, it would be better to put your efforts towards more manageable softwares like D5, Lumion, Twinmotion, and Enscape. Chrome AI is an AI-powered design assistant tool that allows you to create images from text, sketch, 3D model, or even into videos. You can select the style you want to emulate and then Prome lets you choose the rendering mode. The different render modes allow you to create things with high precision, but also with additional creativity. In addition, Prome has several AI editing tools that help refine your image. It seems to be a common theme that AI doesn't seem to know what a tree is. I use the refine, replace, and recolor tools to the best of my ability to improve the context around the building and then add a scenic backdrop. Twinmotion has been growing in popularity since they've recently introduced path trace rendering. You can use the Datasmith plugin to live sync Twinmotion to major 3D model software, allowing you to make changes real time. You're able to drag and drop materials and assets, making Twinmotion easy to use and learn. Twinmotion has one of the biggest material libraries out of the softwares I've tested. A unique feature is that the people and characters in Twinmotion have different animation poses and qualities that can be customized. They have the basic material library and an additional Mega scan textures to use with library decals that most programs don't have. Twinmotion also has a foliage paint tool that quickly brushes vegetation wherever you want it, for example, trees and grass. With more time, I would be able to add decals and more detail to the scene. I would do this to boost the cohesiveness and realism of the composition. One of the benefits of Twinmotion is the large library of assets and materials, as well as it's completely free for students and just for a general version. At first, Twinmotion can be a lot to take in, but it isn't just an architectural visualization software. It can also be used for product design, so that explains some of the confusing aspects. Unreal Engine, in some ways, requires similar efforts that Blender did for me, because it is used for a lot of the same purposes like game design and animation. Just like Twinmotion, Unreal is made by Epic Games. You can easily import your Twinmotion file into Unreal Engine, put on the finishing touches. Some of the controls were similar to Twinmotion, which made the transition a lot easier. I had to set aside a good amount of time still to get the correct plugins and content set up. From there, I could easily download and import materials and assets from the high quality Quixel Bridge library. In addition, you can download additional free and paid assets from the Unreal Engine marketplace, which will take your renderings to another level. The access to high quality materials and assets is what makes Twinmotion and Unreal Engine stand out from the rest. I was impressed by the detail of the trees and the quality of the shadows they produced. With Unreal Engine, you can import metahumans. These have to be the most realistic 3D characters I have ever seen. What's amazing is you can actually customize the characters to look however you want. If I had more time, I'd create a metahuman version of myself, but would also dive more into the weeds on creating better lighting and populating the scene with more assets. I wasn't really happy with the results in 30 minutes, so I'm going to go back and spend a few more hours working on it. It definitely is an improvement. I think there are a lot of other softwares that offer similar results while requiring less labor. Unreal Engine and Blender are definitely not for people looking to render from their laptops. You should have a PC if you're going to run these programs. Here is a list of architecture rendering softwares that either weren't compatible with the programs that I had or just didn't fit in for this video. Keyshot. I did create a render with Keyshot, but it wouldn't let me export without covering it in watermarks. So I just took a screenshot instead. Corona Render is also a part of Chaos Group with V-Ray and Enscape and is one of the go-tos in the international sector of architecture rendering. But I didn't have the right compatibility to run this program. People also use Octane, Cinema 4D, Artlantis, Maya, Shakespeare, and Maxwell. I tried out Maxwell, but the textures were not mapping correctly and frankly, it just wasn't worth my time to figure everything out with that one. Now let's break down all the serious contenders. I separated all the options into AI and rendering engine, ranking them all based on cost, ease of use, materials and assets, compatibility and system requirements. Ranking the cost, Blender, Unreal Engine and Twinmotion are all free, so I put them at one. D5 
is at two because it's also free but has a pro version which you do have to pay and gives you more materials and assets than you would with the free version. Now number three is V-Ray and you start off with a 30 day free trial which gives you a great sense of how to use it and the ins and outs of V-Ray. And then after that it's $12 per month for students and $38 a month for everyone else. At number four is Enscape. What was once free to students is now a whopping $150 for the whole year, which doesn't seem like a large amount unless you're already in $50,000 of debt for architecture school. For everyone else, you can just enjoy paying $46 a month. At five is Lumion. They have a free version for students. And I was thinking about putting this ahead of Enscape for that reason. But when you really dive into how much Lumion is for everyone else, it's significantly more expensive than Enscape and all the other softwares. For an average user, it's $62 a month, but for the pro version, it's $125 a month. The next category is how easy it is to learn and then the overall user interface of the program. As I said before, Enscape was super easy to learn and the user interface was super simple and it made sense that you could drag and drop assets and materials where they needed to go. Twinmotion and D5, I felt like were similar in their user interfaces and how easy they were to learn. There are a lot of different settings and categories that you can mess with. And so initially it might be a little bit confusing, but once you kind of have down the basics, it's super easy and pretty straightforward from there on out. And number three is Lumion because there's some more intricacies when it comes down to applying the right rendering settings and also the different material adjustments that you have to make. But overall, Lumion is a solid option and super easy for beginners. At number four, I have V-Ray just because of the effort and time it takes to make the renderings the highest quality possible, whether that be editing materials or lighting. At number five is Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine and Blender were both completely foreign to me and super confusing. The reason I put Unreal ahead of Blender was because there was a lot of similarities between Unreal Engine and Twinmotion, which made it a little bit easier and helped me faster understand how to kind of work in that software. At number six is Blender. I had no clue what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing. After five to six hours spent watching tutorials and practicing, so it's very difficult to learn, but I know there's an extremely high upside, so I might stick to it and keep using Blender. Material and asset libraries is the next category. This is where Unreal Engine knocked it out of the park. They have a plugin to the Quixel Bridge library, which has a very strong library of super realistic assets and materials that you can import. These materials have all the texture and depth maps and are at a very high quality with imperfections and also clean profiles. So you get a lot more realistic material options other than just very plain surfaces. Now Blender also has a lot of plugins that you can bring into Blender to add in materials, but they don't have any default materials. So this is why I kind of put it below Unreal Engine. And some of those plugins are paid. So just depending on your budget, it might not be as practical, but overall the potential for materials and assets in Blender is super big because a lot of people are using it. Twinmotion has access to a lot of what Unreal Engine has in terms of materials and assets. Not quite as much, but that is why I put it at third because minus the super realistic people and the Unreal Engine marketplace, the materials and the mega scans that can be used in Unreal are also available in Twinmotion, which puts it very high on the list in this category. Number four is D5 but specifically the pro version because you really don't get too much in the free version, which makes sense from a marketing side of it. But D5 and V-Ray, I thought were pretty similar in comparison to what they offered in materials and assets in terms of the quantity and the quality. Lumion I had at number five, and I know this is very low on the list, but I have to say they still have really good assets and materials, and you can't go wrong using Lumion in this category, but some of the other programs have just really stepped up the game to a point where they have gotten better and they offer more than Lumion, but it doesn't mean that Lumion doesn't have what it takes to succeed in those fields. And number six is Enscape. There's a lot of basic and general materials and assets that you can use, which are good, but they're more like surface level and don't get into super high quality renderings. So it's good for beginners, but not necessarily if you want to get the most realistic renderings. The next category is compatibility and workflow. I put Enscape 
D5, Twin Motion, and Lumion all at number one because they have really good workflow with 3D modeling software is allowing live sync and other plugins to combine and simultaneously work between both programs. I put B-Ray at second because it also has a similar integration, but it's a little bit more confusing than the other softwares. I put Unreal Engine at number three because although it doesn't integrate well with the 3D modeling softwares, but you do have a good workflow between Unreal and Twinmotion. I put Blender last due to the need for installing a lot of plugins and adding or downloading additional features to maximize your outcomes. The final category is system requirements. I know all these software sounds super interesting, but if you only have a certain level of laptop or PC, some of them just might not be in your best interest to use because they might be too slow. At number one, I put softwares that I felt I could run off of my laptop, which were Enscape, D5, and Twinmotion. I think these are light file sizes, but they also provide a lot of value and run pretty fast, even on a laptop. And so if that's all you have to work with, I recommend those three softwares. But then I think the rest of these belong in the PC category, unless you really want to be taking five hours, 10 hours to render your images from your laptop. Number two is V-Ray. Um, very good quality renders, but also takes some more time. It works not too big a file size, but it's just that if you want a more powerful and quicker render, you're going to need to step up your game in terms of system hardware. Number three is Lumion. Lumion's huge compared to the software as I have named before. It almost killed my laptop trying to download Lumion and then trying to open it was a whole nother thing. So unless you have a PC, do not download or use Lumion. And then when you do, you get really good results and I highly recommend using it. Blender and Unreal Engine are also really big. They just require a lot of plugins and a lot of connections that just continue to add and pile up in terms of storage and RAM being used. So that is why not only do I recommend using a PC, but making sure it's a pretty powerful one. After weeks of learning all these rendering softwares, I have concluded that the grass is greener where you water it. What that means is virtually all of these softwares have the capability of creating super realistic renders. What makes the difference is the user has the expertise, knowledge, and skill set to make it happen. The software you know best will always give you the best results until you take the time and effort to learn another one. That being said, the goal of this video was to determine the best software to use if you know nothing and don't have a lot of time. Here was the final tally, Twinmotion, D5, Enscape, V-Ray and Unreal Engine, and then Lumion and Blender were tied at the last. Lumion was hurt by the cost and Blender was hurt by how hard it was to learn, but saved by the cost because it was free. But I'd like to hear what you guys think, so comment below if I was wrong or what I could have done differently to make this video better. Thank you guys for watching and welcome to the grind.